Hi everyone, I'm Peter from Roland, and this is the SP404 Mark II. The SP404 Mark II is a compact, creative sampler and effector that's a staple in lo-fi and other styles of hip-hop and electronic music. During the development of the Mark II, we listened closely to the SP community about how we could make it better, but we were also careful to maintain the essence of what people loved about the SP. In this overview, we're going to talk about what's new with the hardware, updates to the sampling and effects workflow, and options for customizing your SP. Let's get started. Let's take a look at what's new with the hardware on the SP404 Mark II. Probably the most obvious is the OLED screen. You can use it for waveform editing, you can use it to smoothly navigate through the different modes, and you can even customize it with personal startup screens and screensavers. There are also 17 velocity sensitive RGB pads, which you can customize. On the back, you can see that we have a quarter inch input and output. We also have eighth inch MIDI, both MIDI in and MIDI out. Lastly, we have a USB-C port, which is useful for external power, streaming audio from mobile devices or your PC or Mac, and connecting to the SB404 app. On the front panel, we have quarter inch and eighth inch headphone jacks. We have a quarter inch input for microphone or guitar, and that'll feed a dedicated input effect with things like guitar amp simulators or vocal effects. Inside the SB404 Mark II, there's 16 gigabytes of internal storage for really fast startup times, internal project switching, and importing and exporting samples. There's also 32 voices of polyphony, so you can really stack pads on top of each other with no risk of cutting samples in and out. The SB404 Mark II comes preloaded with nine banks of high quality sample content made for the modern SP user, and it can run on batteries, so you can take this thing basically anywhere. The SP404 Mark II has an updated sampling workflow. We've added things like real-time chop, auto chop, sample envelopes, pitch shifting, all sorts of different types of enhancements to make the sampling process really fast and really creative. So let's take this sample here. Say I wanna chop that, I can just go to the chop mode here and start the process. And at any time, I could preview those and even zoom in, maybe make a small tweak. And if I'm happy with that, I could assign it to a pad. And there it is in my bank. And if I want to assign some kind of envelope or a way to shape the volume, that's a really easy process where I just press the sample that I want to change. I can go into the envelope screen. You can see the diagram of what the envelope is doing. So if I raise the attack, I can get a kind of almost side chain type of sound with these. And in context, it'll sound like this. We've also made updates to the resampling workflow and added something called skip back sampling. They technically do the same things, but they approach it a little bit differently. So let's take this pattern that I have right here. If I want to resample that as audio, I can do that now just by hitting the resample button. It'll ask me for a location to record this and then press the pattern that I want to resample as audio. going to play through that, and I can stop it basically at any time. And there's my sample right there. Skip back sampling, on the other hand, is like always having a tape recorder in the background. That pattern that I just resampled, let's put a really aggressive effect on it, like the new cassette simulator. That has just been recorded. If I just hit the mark button, it'll go into the skip back mode. 
and I can preview up to 25 seconds in the past that can then be exported to a pad. There that is. Put it on pad eight. So now I have my original resampled pattern and I have that affected pattern. One of the key things that people love most about the SP are the effects. On the Mark II, we have classic effects like the 303 Vinyl Sim, 404 Compressor, amongst other things, but brand new things like the Cassette Simulator, Resonator, a bunch of other cool stuff to play with. So let's check it out. So I can start using the effect controls in the same exact position that the 404 and 303 were. I still have a top five effect selection that has mostly classic effects like the DJ Effects Looper. Things like Isolator, Delay, Filter Drive are basically unchanged, but there's a new one called Resonator, which is really good for kind of getting melodic textures out of percussion or non-melodic textures. So this is really good for sampling. Then if I go into the MFX, I could see that there is through a three vinyl sim, Four, four vinyl sim. New cassette simulator. And if I look at the top, I see a lot more creative and brand new effects that are really great for resampling and coming up with really interesting types of samples. Like I really like downer personally. And there's a bunch of things to play with. There's 37 total effects that we'll have at launch, and all of them are really inspiring. Also, what's new with the SP44 Mark II are bus effects. Bus effects is a system that's inspired by analog and digital mixing consoles that lets you establish different effects on different buses. You can then route your pads to whatever effects that you want. I've got this example here that uses this routing system. If I go to the effects page, I can see that bus one will go into bus two, and then there's two additional buses after that for mastering style effects or effects that you just want over the entire mix all the time. I can easily change the routing just by hitting the value knob to get more of a parallel type of situation happening, but for this example, I'll leave it as serial. So I'll go to this pattern here, play it. Everything's going into bus one. Say I want to route stuff into bus two, I'll just select bus two. Hold remain, and start to select the different types of pads that I want to route to that bus specifically. So I could see that there's two different colors and that's a really good indicator to show what's on bus one and what's on bus two. And let's do something really strong on bus one now, like uh, the downer effect I think is really obvious. So I'll turn that on. So notice how all of the melodic stuff in the top end percussion are now pitched down going through the downer effect, but the main you know, body of the percussion are completely dry. That means I can go to bus two and add an additional effect on top of that, like the DJ effects looper. Go back to bus one. I could just disable this effect. And now we're back to normal. The SP404 Mark II has an upgraded pattern sequencer. So you can do things like assign different tempos per bank or assign a tempo that's global to the project. Let's take a listen to a pattern that's assigned to one bank and then I'll change it to another bank and you'll hear the tempo change. Another upgrade we've made is adjustable input quantize, swing, different types of record input options. And that's really easy to see. If I play a pattern, I can hit the record button at any time and it's going to drop me into the recording process. 
as soon as it loops back around. If I hit the record setting, I can see what my quantize is set to, I can see the BPM. All of it is real time, so we still kind of have that very quick and fluid type of uh, recording process with the SP, but it adds a little bit more control over your timing so that you can get a really good rhythm that doesn't sound like it's hard quantized or robotic. A new convenience feature is the pattern editor. So if I go to the pattern select and then select a pattern that I want to edit, I can hit pattern edit and I can see how long it is. I can adjust the length of it. I can adjust where it starts in the pattern and do things like, let's say, crop the first measure. And now when I play the pattern, it'll play only one measure's worth of music. People have been performing with SPs for years in many different ways. DJ Mode effectively turns your Mark II into a two-channel DJ mixer. You can load up two individual tracks on two different decks and synchronize them. I'll go into DJ Mode, and already I could see that the screen graphic has changed to mimic two different decks. The pad color configuration has changed to mimic what the functions are on each pad. So I could see that there's deck one is here and deck two is here. I can do things like change the BPM using the pads on the different decks uh, or kind of bend it temporarily like I'm adjusting a vinyl. Uh, and I already have two songs loaded on here. So if I play this first one, I can use the control knobs to behave just like faders on a DJ mixer. And I could do things like temporarily increase the tempo if I was trying to sync it, or temporarily slow it down. On deck two, I have the ability to cue it in the headphones as well before bringing up the faders to make sure that they're in sync. So for now, I'll play the song that's on the second deck, and then turn on sync. Bring it up. And it's a really handy tool for blending two songs together. The SP scene has always been one about customization. The faceplate has four screws that make it easily removable. You can download the template online that'll help you customize your own graphics for it as well. There's also easily removable knobs and user customizable startup and screensaver images. The RGB pads can be user customized as well to reflect your own favorite colors. If you are looking for a creative way to perform and produce using samples and effects, the SP4 Ford Mark II is just the thing. Head over to Roland.com to find out more. Thank you.